wrench? Would you like to check this lava setup? Yeah. Is it like, running down the street? Yeah. Yeah. You see where it's coming from? Not really. It's like the gasket to the pump. Hey YouTube, how's it going? I just wanted to say before, you know, the beginning of this video, that all the clips shot in this were filmed about a year and a half before I actually did the editing and did anything. This video is about me troubleshooting and trying to fix my heater in this old girl here. And, you know, it kind of, it's, I didn't know if I wanted to make this a video for for a while. That's why I never I never made it, and I just sat on these clips for a year. But being we're all in quarantine, there's nothing to do, so I decided, hey, let, let's let's put that heater video out. So I kind of tr was troubleshooting the heater control unit, some vacuum lines, the hot water valve, kind of all of that. I tear it all apart and replace some stuff. I in the end, I, I in the end, I think my main problem was I just had two vacuum lines switched around, and it's kind of kind of dumb. But if anyone's interested in actually seeing how the GM like air thing works for like 69 and older, um, this is it. This is it. So if you have some funny like vacuum problems, your your air ducts aren't working, you know, it won't blow on my defrost, it won't blow out of my vents. My heat's not hot, it's hot like intermittently. Like, give this a check or ask me in the comments because that's what this is all about. So, hey, and if you just wanna watch it for entertainment value, um, I'm glad it was there for you. So, that's what this is, you know, just just to let you know. So, all right, well, I'll let, I'll let it go. This is the video and thanks for watching and subscribe for more junk. Thanks. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Cody here with another little vlog video here on the 68 Cutlass. So, here's what's going on. The heater, it's January, it's cold. The heater is working very intermittently. It's working, it's not working. It goes it's hot, it goes cold. I get the little heater controller and I slide it around and heat will work and it goes away and it's really strange. So. I'm, I've been trying to figure this out for quite a while and here's what happened about a year over a year ago No, more like last April. So like nine months ago the heat the heater core was making this like purring sound like And it, you could tell when it had rpm and the water was flowing that it was making this like chirping sound in the heater core What that wound up being was my hot water valve the original one 51 year old valve broke apart it, it sent its pieces down the core and I, I knew it was bad because of the heater went cold my hoses weren't warming up at that time It was spring spring around the corner. So all summer. I just left it and then earlier this fall I replaced this thing put it all together and it still wasn't cold enough yet to need heat And then once it was in December I was getting these issues and I thought the valve was bad it turned out a couple of problems here My radiator was low. I was kind of experiencing like the an air pocket because I was getting heat at certain RPMs and stuff. Anyway, valve is new. We replaced my thermostat, and then I replaced my radiator cap. All that, and it didn't affect anything with the heater. And I, you know, I tried the vacuum pump on the little valve when it's running, just in case it's a vacuum problem. And just all my results were just intermittent and weird. And I think I was fighting the intermittent heat because when I'm testing my vacuum line, I was low on coolant. I had an air pocket. So you're kind of like troubleshooting like three different things at the same time and you don't even know it. It's a little early in the morning. Once everyone wakes up, I'll start this up and I wanna, I wanna try that, that valve. But the uh, reason I'm getting intermittent heat and controls, I'm pretty sure I got a vacuum leak in this little sucker here. Cause I, I actually pulled the, the line through that comes through. This is normally on the vacuum canister and I pulled it through here. A little easier to work with uh, and I know when these are in the off off and cold position 
on the 6869 you have if you put vacuum on here it's supposed to hold it it doesn't it's not supposed to go anywhere and this does not hold vacuum my 69 holds vacuum when everything's off so and that tells me it's a leak right right in here because there's five five or six other vacuum lines in this little diaphragm here and they're uh, they're not they're all hooked up and when I blow into this I can actually feel air escaping kind of near where this connect so it's super weird and I don't know if there's like a little like diaphragm thing inside of here that needs to be tightened up or an o-ring or something I found this unit another one of these online and it's like 250 bucks the guy who rebuilds them same guy you can send yours in for a core uh, $50 he charges like 170 plus parts to get it rebuilt kind of kind of a lot I don't know if I want to do that yet but you know as you see this this thing has seen better days it doesn't look that great but I'm pretty sure this this has a vacuum leak and uh, what I want to do is I want to pull all the bolts out from behind it there's, there's three volts a center one and two on the sides on the opposite side pull it out run run my vacuum tester on that thing and uh, I'll, I'll plug all the other ports up and I want to see if I could trace down that leak and maybe it's just something something loose in here but uh, it's a pretty intricate little thing there's a couple electrical contacts that this thing makes for when it's when you're moving over like for air conditioning and um, some other stuff you can hear it actually click when you move it over and this little initial click here is what what opens up the the line to send uh, vacuum to the water valve so it's actually another vacuum line that feeds back out of the firewall to the vac to that water valve it's not a very complicated system but there's just a lot of parts to it so when you're trying to troubleshoot heat or air not working you kind of gotta a lot of little factors and this is kind of the central hub of the whole thing it's fed in by this line off the canister so this ain't holding vacuum so my easiest guess is to just take this out. It's really hard to work back here. So if I pull this out, there's five, five or six ports. I can plug them. And um, if I try and trace down where this leak is at, I'm pretty sure it's right in here. Hopefully I get that sorted out and uh, get my heat working again. This is just bugging the crap out of me because I drive and it's not hot. And when, you know, when something doesn't work, it's, it's really annoying. So that's plan, pull that out. You can see here, I already, I already took my radio out. I took, I pulled all the vents. Pretty easy. There's a couple of vent pieces for that. There's this little plate. This goes up under the steering wheel. There's a vet driver's side plastic vent, a uh, passenger vent. There's a center one that pushes air up, straight up to that middle vent and the defrost. All right, well, it's a little later and I am absolutely frustrated at this point. I, I didn't get it on film, but I started up the car and I did a few things. I just rerouted. I used my tester, vacuum tester, and I tested the vacuum output on the canister and it's reading good when it's running, good vacuum. So I, I ran the vacuum line right to the water valve back here to force the heater core to flow, force it on. And both hoses will heat up hot. So I know when I go in the car and I when I turn this to warm while it's running, it's just cool air. Like I could tell that the heater box is getting warm and I can move that flap right there behind this flap. This is the flap that moves for the upper vents. When that's moved out of the way, you can see the blending door and I could see it move with this cable. So the blend door here is moving, why? Is the air not warm? The heater core is hot. So like, I don't know what this is. All I can think of is there's something to do with when this goes to heat, there's another diaphragm in here that needs to move in. This whole thing is losing vacuum. It's not holding it at all. So I guess all I could do is just pull it out and see what I could do. I mean, look at here, we have heat, one, two. We have five options here. And there are five vacuum lines on that port, maybe even more, six or something. That's gotta be it. Everything else checks out. The blend door is good. The valve is good. The heater core is getting water. Maybe it's just poor flow. Like when it, when I, I idled it for a long time with everything just off, flipped it to warm and it was like kind of warm for like a second. 
and then it kind of tailed off like I think I just stagnant heat uh, you know what I don't know I just gotta take this out let's see let's see what we get a few moments later all right so that was actually super easy to do quarter inch fasteners on the sides so you got some con uh, electrical controls for the blower got some electrical controls here for the blower I believe that switch here is for the uh, AC compressor to turn on. I'm gonna have to label these vacuum lines. I know they're already color coded and in the service manual it shows what each port, each color gets. I think each little port is numbered too. Draw a little uh, map for it. Woo! <laughs> I honked the horn. You know, definitely redo this stereo wiring. Ugh. Why did I think this was okay? All right, so that'll be something to do. Five minutes later. So here's a quick diagram if anyone ever needs this here's the lines blue green and a solid black on these bottom three here blue green black orange pink blue green black orange pink connector here two connectors here uh, another guy here this one here is your vacuum source that's white goes right to your firewall here this one ran off of a little t um, that was part of the harness, a little short T went to there, and it was black. So, this is it. Yeah, I'm gonna cap these off and pump this up, see what we get. See if it holds the vacuum. If it does, good. These were just, I have a, that means the leak was either on one of these or one of the lines going out, so. But if this all holds up good, then I'm gonna vacuum test each one of these ports. Should give us a better clue weather and this may just need to be cleaned up and get everything reattached when I bought the car air didn't blow out of the upper vents and it was because one of these popped off so hopefully it'll be easy like that and then I could just you know play with this I went ahead and I I capped these off thinking I was gonna uh, test this out but after looking at it a little closer I think I think the issue is up in here let's take a peek over as you can kind of tell, kind of hard. Um, this front unit with the five cable, uh, the five lines, it's not connected in any way to here. And I think these three, which is actually just two, the middle is a blank. I think this is just for the heat. So I kept these off thinking I was doing myself a favor here. Here's where I think the problem is. I, I thought I was, thought I was in the clear, but I'm not. Um, Trusty little mighty vac. Source is number three. I'm gonna get this up on here. Just to prove that my vacuum is working, I'm gonna hold it with my thumb. Holds good. Holds it real good. All right. It ain't pretty, but it works. Bike cable lock there. Okay. Here's my source. Source vacuum, AKA the motor. Plugs into this one. Watch here, off and cold. Now as far as I can remember, on the 69, which is identical to this, this should hold a vacuum, but it doesn't. It doesn't hold it. It leaks it. You're just driving your car with your no, no air on. You're not supposed to have just a vacuum leak. This is supposed to be holding vacuum. So pretend you want to put your heater on. One click, and it's still not holding. Now, interestingly enough, you want to put this on warm, which this thing moves a lot of stuff down underneath here. We'll flip it and look, but you put this on warm and it holds, but it's got this slow leak. It holds when you put it to warm. Look at both vacuum gauges. They're both dropping about the same rate. The 69, it doesn't do this slow leak and I know it holds. I'm, I'm puzzled. I'm really, I really am confused. <laughs> so I guess I can always send this out to get, get work down here, but. All right, I'm gonna click this between off and heat from the underneath. Off and heat. So when you click it to heat, you can see that it does move. You can actually see the grease in, in here still. Still shiny a little bit. Don't know if it's focusing on that, but it, it does move. But now what moves up here is This the lower thing, or the actually the upper one, the off heat defrost. 
the, the selection. That is not connected to this little valve at all. It's not connected to it. You can see it's just uh, pinned in through this little guy. And the only thing that affects this is the hot cold control, which makes sense. You know, when you're in your car, it's running and you have your heater on and you want to kill it, you click this over, you'll hear it go, you hear it lose vacuum. Is that a clue? I don't know. I, I, I truly think this is, this is the problem. I don't want to take all these levers out. It looks pretty intricate. There's a little center thing there. Can I move that? I'm going to pivot this thing out. I licked that as I pumped it in it. I felt the suction. You are the, the culprit. You just twist that up out of there. <clears throat> now if I want to take this off, what does that entail? It looks like if I slide this over, I do have to get this little plastic bushing out. Basically all the levers got to come apart. Push on you like that, all right. Easy does it. Perfect. A little longer than a few minutes later. Here it is. Looks like a rivet. I'm not quite sure how to how this works, but it's leaking. You can see there's this grease in here. It's just so dirty and old. We gotta see if I could find another one of these parts. 7283317. Heater control vacuum thingy. Vacuum switch or 68 cutlass. There she is. What I kind of want to do is just for fun, I want to run my uh, my gauges up on here. I'm curious which which switch goes to which port, and slow leak. Is that a slow leak? Nope. Hold it good. So off, and I'm gonna switch over to heater. Heater! All right, you, you did something. Defrost. I think, I think at this point, the uh, it's not gonna drain its vacuum out because it's, uh, it's just all built up in there. Oh, there's a release. This thing has a little release on it, that's nice. All right, look at that. I switched it on heat and it didn't go back. This thing's getting all bound up in here. I'm just playing around here. Guess is this is the source. Pump it up. Awesome, it's holding. You want vent? You want defroster? Defrost. Building. Hmm. So defrost is like a multitude of vents. It's like all of them? Huh. Okay. So if you want to turn on your vent, it's moving flaps. Not this one. Okay. Are you involved? Yes, you are. Are you? Yes, you are. Are you? Yep, okay. So, the vent line runs on the green, the pink, and orange. Green, pink, orange are all needed for vents. Kill it. Now, let's see. I'm wondering, this heat mode, which I think I figured out is just, just you. This orange line. When you turn on heat, it moves this orange. So I, I don't know what this goes to. Reason I'm playing with this is because when I run the car, I ran it with basically this whole thing bypassed. And what I did was I ran my the vacuum canister straight over to the hot water valve and I put this on warm and heat and it was still not hot. 
So is there some other flap that's being moved? Hey everybody, so it's April 2020. I'm editing this video literally like a year later and I'm missing clips. This is really long and dragged out and if anyone's actually watching this, like leave a comment because it's probably very boring. And nobody's watching this for entertainment. You're watching this because you're troubleshooting your car. If anyone's watching this for entertainment, comment on that too. Then it lets me know that I'm making something useful. Anyway, so I miss, I'm missing a clip, but what happened in between here is I actually purchased a fully rebuilt air control unit. The whole thing replacement and I'm hooking it up. The five port switch was new, the little two, three port switch thing was new, and this part of the clip, I'm installing that newly purchased unit. So let's go with that and see how it is. Thanks for watching. Test out the wiring on the light. Put the bulb back up in here. You know, I bet you the reason I never, it's never lit is it probably grounds. It probably has to ground to the fixture. Ah. I'm such a dummy. Here on this harness, it's not like one one line goes to one thing. Like when you pump up one, the way that little manifold works, I think it sends vacuum to multiple spots at once. So like I pump up this and this this line will hold. This line holds good. It doesn't move at all. And all all these lines in the in my dash are really really good. Uh, no cracks or anything. So uh, the other ones, when you pump them up, they don't hold, but I think it's because it sends vacuum to multiple lines at once so that I'd have to kind of plug them all, plug them all as I test it. You know, I'm just going to roll with it and say that they're good, but if, I'm not sure if this is picking up on the camera. The ends of these lines are all bulged out because they've been fitted over that, that little manifold for all those years. So I'm going to clip the ends off of each one before I hook them on. So there's that. Let's see if this little guy works. Yeah, here's where the... Yeah, everything looks super nice on here. Nice, clean finish. Uh, looks good. I'm hopeful. If not, I will be contacting the seller because this was not the cheapest part I've ever bought. Okay, so uh, looking at this from the top, that is tight. That is not coming off. Cool. Here it comes. Ease it on. This white tube goes through the dash and it plugs onto the vacuum canister. Just to be 100% sure, I think I'm gonna pump it up. I'm gonna pump up this line just to be sure that this has no leaks because this this tube's a little, looks a little rotty, a little cracked up at the point where it comes into the motor because that's, you know, a lot of elements out there. I'm gonna plug into that. I'm gonna plug into it and I'm going to pump it up and see. I just want to know for sure. <clears throat> Alright, there it is. Pumped it up. 15 pounds. It's holding nice and strong. So I'm going to call that line good. I'm going to hook it all back up. And we'll go from here. This leftmost bit is the vacuum source from the manifold. Let's plug her on. And the last bit is the end which is the piece off of the T. I'm gonna clip the end of that, like I've been doing. Pretty hard. It's, it's, the, the plastic is, it's not hard, but that end is just so stretched out and it is not gonna get a good grip. Now, I can't remember if I already mentioned, but the way this works, I believe, this bypasses vacuum back into this here manifold. Then, another bit off of here, it actually runs back into the engine bay. Now, I, 
uh, easy to figure out. Um, so this piece with the T, it comes back in, and I think it, it, it feeds into the solid black right here. So that, that's why I was having an issue. This was leaking. You pump it, you, this gets vacuum, it was losing it here. So I, this was getting nothing. So when, when you actually turn it on to heat, vacuum will flow through this, it flows into here, uh, in turn running the rest of your stuff. And the vacuum, one of these lines actually runs back out the firewall onto the vacuum uh, hot water valve on the motor. I'm so anxious to drive this car. I haven't had heat in like a year. Here we go. Now this is where the uh, fan control knob is. Bottom, bottom pin, bottom port. It's a three prong plug. Here we go. This is kind of offset. It's a two pronger. Plug her in. Boom. Good. Now a little oxidation on that, but yeah. I live in the desert. I ain't worried about it. One way, buddy. Sweet. Okay, this must be with that guy. Cool. Here's my test. This is hooked up just how I want. How I believe is right. <clears throat> the white line, the source. I need to be able to pump this up under my dash with the pump and it needs to hold. Uh, when everything is off, 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 that needs to hold. And if not, it's either broken or I'm a dumbass. So let's find out. <sighs> white line, here it is. Ooh. Okay, well, it's not acting as I expected it to. All right, the video cut off and I don't know where, quite where it's saved. So heat off. Heater off. Pump hooked up to the switch. Ah! I'm getting this. I'm gonna. I'm getting this today. Today. All right. Panic is evaded for now. So here it is. All vacuum lines put back in. Blue, green, black, pink, and orange. So. Off, off, off. Everything's off. This is like you're idling. When I'm idling, look at that. It just doesn't hold it. I don't understand. So I must. So it's leaking somewhere. I must have a, just a, a draw somewhere else. But. So, am I just stupid? So. I would have to plug and cap and check each one of these. But here's why I want to kind of proceed. I can put this to vent. Switched it to vent. Check right there. See if that comes in on the camera. <clears throat> There's the flap. I'm gonna give this one pump, two pumps, three pumps, four, five, Six, seven, it's opening. Now I'm sure, I'm sure my motor puts out more vacuum than this little mighty back pump. So once I give it a, a, cu a couple pumps, it stays, it stays open. It wasn't, this was not happening with the other, the other one that I had. So I feel, okay, yeah, there's the close. So, now if I shut this off, it's gonna it's gonna close right away. Boop. Okay. Do I proceed? Let's check the water valve. Let's pretend I want some heat. Hot, hot heat. What are we expecting? Alright. Hope this does something. Okay. Here's the sound again. Do you hear it? Do you hear it, folks? This is supposed to send... All right, I must just have something not hooked up right in here. Because there is like a definite leak. Where are you coming from? It's 
like you can hear it. You can hear it coming right now. <clears throat> I must have something backwards or something. Stand by. Now something my dad always told me was when all else fails, read the instructions. <laughs> so here is the book. Now it's for 69. I'm pretty sure they're exactly the same because 68, 69 use the same looking thing, same looking diagram, same colors on the sheet. So let's just cross our fingers that this is okay. Now, I'm gonna cross compare what I wrote uh, to what's in the book. So I'll just use my old one here as an example. Now I'm gonna number my unit first by the numbers that I see here to start. So on my unit, I have a one, a two, a three, Three, two, one. Oh, cool. Now, by looking in here, each one of these ports is numbered. So the order of these look like five, five, four, three, two, seven. Five, five, four, three, two, and seven. Five, four, three, two, seven. Five, four, three, two, and seven. Read the instructions. Now, the number three, okay, no, I wasn't wrong. Number three is white. Number three is my source, white, which is what I have. Black goes from number one to a T to the two. So, short piece off the T, it comes off to the two which is solid black, exactly as I have it, black. Now, color-coded, pink. The pink, next one after the black, is pink. Looks like it goes into the five. Kinda hard to tell, hey look, five. Perfect, five. Blue is next, four, four. Perfect, five, four. Very hard to see. Two, two is the black, just like I already did. White goes to the three. What's left? Seven, which was orange. Orange comes through. Hard to see, it makes this turn. It goes to the three. Where's that green? No, green. Okay, so green and orange are like right with each other here. Green, orange, come through to three and seven. Three and seven. Five, four, three, two, seven. So I have green for three, which is the darker color here, which is that's the darker, that's green. Orange is the lighter one. Green, three, orange, curves down to seven. Three, green, seven, orange. Okay, so I was right. I'm good. I am good with this. Just needed to check. Let me do a mock-up. Okay, so I have a clue here. I have a clue. The white. The white line, which I labeled as source. It's not the source. The white on the three, it goes to the water valve. That is the uh, the source. That is the, the, that's the hot water on the engine. There's your block. Black, which is on a T, makes sense. Look, it goes to the vacuum canister. The canister goes into the engine to feed the uh, to feed the vacuum. I'm such an idiot. Okay, so I had this backwards, and I probably was driving with it backwards for a long time. I, I, I honestly don't know if it matters if it's flipped because this is just a, like a switch. So, okay, so let's pretend number one is the source. One is the source. White is the valve. Let's hook it up that way. Okay, hooked up as it is. 
know, I hope I didn't damage it by running vacuum the wrong direction. I, I doubt it, but here we are. Off and off. I'm gonna pump up my uh, tight, tight as can be. Perfect, okay. Great, does anything happen when I turn it to heat? Mm, all right, warm. Warm, now what I expect to happen, okay, I just relieved it, relieved it there. What I expect this to do is send a vacuum to you. It's not doing it. Where's it going here? What's happening? What is this? I can't get off! What is this? I can't get off! What is this? I'm stuck! What is my life? <laughs> I can't do it, John! I can't even! I can't fucking do it! I what is this doing? <laughs> what is this doing, man? Okay. Now, technically what this is, this is heater on, heat and warm. This doesn't even matter at this point. This doesn't affect that. It's not even connected to the movement of that little piece. So, if I want heat, this isn't gonna work. This isn't sending vacuum to the thing like it should. Let's check my OG model. Focus. All right, now here's my original unit and it, it operates differently. So, three, two, one. Water valve. Water valve, pump. This is heat off. Pumping. Look, it holds. Pretty dang solid too. Now, you're getting cold. Put your heat on. Bing. It opens the water. You know. Now, granted, it's not. It's not steady. This thing does leak from where that little brass thing fits on, but it's not bad. It's not bad, and I could probably just put a piece of electrical tape over this, and it'll hold a whole lot better. Battery's going low. Okay, here we are. Here, my original. Seven two eight. Six five seven five. Here's the one I just got, and it's three three eight six nine. It's a different part number, and it it functions differently. It's not the same. So the way this, let's hook up the new one with the mock-up because I just showed on my old one, off sends nothing to my heater. This is different, and it's just like I thought. It's backwards. So on the new guy, when you pump up, number one, with the heat off, you get vacuum. I mean, granted the guy did a f fabulous job rebuilding this little thing here, but it's, it's not right, it's backwards. When you turn your heat on, that's gonna close your, your, your heat. This is probably like, this is off of a, a, not a 68, 69, this is off of like a 70 or something, because I know, my mom's 7442, the red one, or, or later on, they changed it. It's changed at some point to where vacuum either shuts or closes the, the hot water valve, and this is the wrong bit. I need this one on here. Quick stupid observation. So the reason why I was hearing that like vacuum suction leaking sound from under the hood was, uh, when I hooked it up backwards and I had the three and the one flipped, uh, when you pump it up off, it's fine. You turn it on, and yeah, it loses vacuum, but you hear it, you hear it lose out of here because it, this isn't, it's a switch. It's, it's not meant to be sucking from this point. It's meant to pull from here. The, so that explains the sound, but that doesn't explain what's wrong, why this is flipped. So. I'm going to have to take a video on my phone, I'm going to demonstrate what's wrong with this and I'm going to email the guy and tell him that, hey buddy, this part is the wrong one. So hopefully I can get a rebuilt one of these, maybe he'll send me one, he had them listed on his website, and uh, 
we'll get it going because I don't know if I want to reuse the one that's on the old guy. I, I probably could. I could probably get away with that. I could also bypass it. I don't need to use this valve. I can just pull vac send vacuum just to here to control my vents. You know, this this will control the the blend door and I'll just change my vacuum line on the valve. But you know, it just I don't like having a a janky setup with something that's not functioning right because think about it. With this, I'll never have heat. It'll never happen because when it's cold and cold, I can have this on here on heat. I could put it on full blast. What's this going to do? It's going to blow ice cold air out from the outside because the blend door is going to be shut. But guess what? Heater core is going to be open. So heater core will flow. I'm going to switch this to warm. Air is going to be hot for like a second, but it shuts the heater core because the valve is closed. You know, I, there's no way to, to, uh, to, um, you know, I have this backwards, but, the, uh, I'm not going to have, I'm not going to have heat. It'll never work. This valve is completely incompatible with the way my, my car works. Now, the, uh, uh, another way to make this work is if my heat valve on my motor was different. If my heater valve on the car was one that needed vacuum to stay shut it would work so if it was you know it, it would just need to be backwards too because this is backwards but i i know i have the right kind of valve i know vacuum is what runs that thing so i'm frustrated but i learned something so i guess i'll contact the seller gosh this is just an ongoing saga with this stupid stupid thing I, I don't know whether to reuse what i reused with what, what i had or do this because maybe i just had something wrong the whole damn time maybe i had the wrong the wrong lines hooked up to my stuff the whole time you know i just don't know i just don't know what to do because i bet you i bet you i could plug that in and i bet you i'll get my air to work again you know but, but also, you know, I, I could return this, but why would I? This looks fabulous. This switch is nice and tight, you know, compared to this. I mean, it worked, it's just loose. So, all right, contacting the guy. Bing, 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 bing. We have a winner, folks. I'm running the car with my old valve, everything hooked up like the book. And, look. Drip. This thing's leaking. All right. So that's actually a brand new valve from Rock Auto. I'm gonna have to, uh, get an RMA on that sucker but I'm gonna let it run up warm up see if I can actually feel the water get hot and uh, we'll go from there yeah. gosh do I feel like a dummy so let me just recap here <sighs> what I did plugged everything back to the book exactly like that the light bulb even works pretty cool um, heat works. Heat works fine. Not a problem. All the vents, they work great. I must have just had that source flip-flopped on the, on the, on the vacuum, hot water vacuum switch. Um, I don't know how that happened. You know, it could have been flip-flopped here. It could have been flip-flopped back there. I don't know when it happened because, you know, I felt like everything just worked fine up until... You know, the whole start of these problems was a little over a year ago. My OG water valve, it like broke apart. And there was bits and pieces in my heater core and you could hear it going inside the heater core. It wasn't hot, so this broke apart, clogged the core. I replaced the valve, flushed the core, everything seemed fine. Then it was summer, drove all summer, didn't know it was messed up. And here it is January and it's been like four months with no heat. And I just had some lines flip-flopped or something, so 
we're dripping water here. Time to uh, hunt down some parts. The, uh, the journey continues. So it's been a few days and I have an update. I talked to the part guy. I'll leave a link to him in the description there. I really recommend him. And he, I told him that the vacuum switch on the unit he gave me was functioning wrong. And um, explained to him the issue. I told him the part number of the one I needed. He looked through his stuff and he found the right one. So, you know, he said, I've been build, rebuilding these things for years. I never knew that the, there were ones that functioned differently. And uh, he went ahead and sent it to me for, for nothing. So, pretty cool. I'll get this set up and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mail him back the stuff that I didn't need because he's, he's doing a great service to the classic car community by by remanufacturing and and selling these these parts so I'd like to give back however I can to that also went out and I picked up a brand new heater control valve so I'm gonna get this sucker on I'm gonna get this guy on with the new piece and we'll see how it works and hopefully after this everything will be working just fine so We'll go with that. I have to take this this apart. Easy piece of cake, and um, should be should be rolling. Looking forward to it. Two thousand years later. Okay, so we're off here. Here's my water valve. What should happen? This shouldn't. That gauge shouldn't move. Hey. Not moving. Let's get some heat. Heater core on. Perfect. Let's kill the vacuum. Drain. Pump it up. Works. Cool. So also heat on this guy. It's also an opener. Perfect. Does have a very slow drain. You see it going back like that. I'm not going to sweat it. Uh, the one I have now does the same thing, but it's not nearly as slow as this. So, constant engine vacuum. I would say this isn't, it is a leak, but it's not too bad. So, and it's only when there's heat. So, kill it and kill it. Works perfect. Awesome. Okay, the time has come to replace the heater core valve, finally. Okay, so what I'm doing is <clears throat> removing the filler neck for the transmission. As you can see now, with the tab removed on this and the vacuum canister gone, the uh, trans filler can move clear out of the way to have enough room for the valve to go in. And you can see where I put this one in and I rubbed over the valve. I, I didn't really do that right in. Down the pan we go. Okay. About ready to put the new one on. Pull that out. Water line is just right there. It got. Kinda made a huge mess. Hopefully I can get this finished so I can clean out of this garage. Water everywhere. Just to be extra safe, I blew the heater core out. So I'm gonna get this on one step closer. I think everything down here is done. New valve in, trans filler reattached. That, that bell housing bolt was a pain in the butt to get to back there. But I got it. There's that. All the little hose retainers plugged back in, hose clamps on. Everything seems okay. So, other than filling up the coolant, this looks done to me. Yeah, vacuum advance is hooked up. Other vacuum lines look okay. Booster, uh, the, uh, the vacuum canister is hooked back up. That thing, I quickly tested it. That thing does not have a vacuum leak, so that's another plus. I think we should be good to get back under the dash. Hopefully, this new one works. Uh. Our new air unit plugged in, hooked up. Blue, green, black, pink, orange, all in order, like we've seen. I'm just gonna run it off on the floor here. Everything should be fine. All right, ready for the first start.
I think I flooded it when I was cleaning, cleaning the intake. I'm gonna need to top that off. Okay, so now, back in the car, I'm gonna make sure all the vacuum stuff is going as it should. So what I should see, first blower motor, I'm gonna put it on heat. All right, switch works perfect. I'm gonna keep that on low, and I'll put this up on hot hot to open up the heater core. Um, here's actually the blended door cable. I'll, I'll have to pull on that later. But what I wanna check is all vacuum stuff. My test for that, switch this to vent. Vent mode here, that sucker's gonna open up. Perfect. That went quick. And guess what, it's already warm. Oh man, I can already feel the heat. I am so happy. <laughs> yeah, this is already hot. Before, before I fix this, this wasn't even, this wouldn't be warm at all right now. Oh, I am so glad. Get that off the fast idle. <laughs> Needs a little more time. All right, this is great. This is already hot. Okay, now, I just wanna check, make sure all of my uh, water lines are looking good. Make sure I got no drips, no leaks on that valve. I'm expecting that heat to be even warmer now. Oh yeah, toasty, toasty air. I am so glad. So, here's the problem. What I thought I could have done, which I guess I still could have. Um, to get warm air, there is another vacuum diaphragm inside of this box. Because I would set this to hot, hot air, heat mode, while this had a vacuum leak, and I, had, I, I sourced vacuum on the valve, I still had no heat. So there is some sort of mechanism vacuum flap in here that diverts warm and cold air that is besides the the cable um so i technically i could have bypassed this had i avoided the t and i i completely avoided and bypassed the little valve here and i only ran full vacuum source to that and these all is normal i feel like that would have worked on my old unit. I'm not going to bother with it because this looks so much nicer. The switches, everything's a lot cleaner and it looks so much better than my other one. So yeah, that is really, really nice. So let's heat. I did the, uh, just here I pulled the cable for the uh, blending door and it is colder. It's really tough to troubleshoot the heat on this when the hood's open because all that hot engine air gets sucked right up through the cowl and it goes right in but I can tell this is colder and I'll shut it and red hot awesome 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 okay so it's done it's fixed you see here that little flat spot and the little rod below it that is where base of the uh, blend door cable goes in it's kind of hard to do with show this with one hand but I have it in the warm position and then I have the cable pushed in and I'm gonna bolt it on just like that one fastener there's a little speed nut thing that presses on that holds the cable so that when you as you move it it will move so as you see as you move it, it moves the cable easy another quick fact before I get this in that uppermost bolt it says air conditioning it connects to this little spot there and that's actually the lower bolt for this gauge here so if you were inclined to put in a tachometer right there, which I want to do, 
eventually you're gonna have to pull this same air unit out so just let you know I wish I had a tack to throw in there but maybe someday well here's the unit installed it looks super nice and this I'm just surprised on how good this air switch turns it is so smooth So number one test, heat, warm, let's blow, should be relatively warm, and it is, super. Next test is the vent, one click, boom, look at that, that thing moves fast, it moves faster than it did before, defrost, that's right there, right up here, heat, it's nice and warm, hell yeah, driving this baby to work tomorrow, maybe the rest of the week just to celebrate. Three hours later, can you move it along, I'm all out of time cards. Oh, it's out. What do you have? What the? That's coming out the water pump. You had a punch? Like check this all of a sudden? Yeah. How much you came out? Look at this. So we running down the street? Yeah. Well, oh no, it's, I think it's, I changed that valve right there. That's that heat valve. Okay. And that's what I wanted to check if it was leaking. Because I just did that over the weekend. I thought, let me look. And then. All right, so that's the end of the video. If anyone actually truly watched this, like, leave me a comment and just say, I watched this. <laughs> I just want to know. I mean, is this of any value to anybody? I mean, if, if anything at all, this video is going to help me in like 30 years when I have to fix this again. So that's why, that's why I know what I'm going to do it for. But if it's useful to anyone else, like, let me know. Because that's that would be mean a little something to me that, that I helped one person. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. And... And thanks, thanks for everything. Stay safe.